on to the main crux of the of the of the matter of love. Man, we we're in. Uh, I think this is session six because I think one of those sessions was double, but we're for sure in the fifth session of talking about love. We've gone a lot of different directions. Let's just be reminded that what is the definition of love? It's best for you at my expense. It's best for you at my expense. There's a cost to this thing. Love is an action word, not a feeling word. Um, where we got to in, I think, session three with the bold question from Mike is, what does God feel for us if he just behaves in love? Because love's not a feeling. And but. what we got to was, love is the way he acts out of the mercy he feels for us. He feels compassion towards us, and then because of that compassion, he behaves in his identity of love, which I thought was just a really good landing point of how he feels for us. He actually feels more towards us because of his compassion and his pity than he would if, if we had a Philo-style love. We are on page seven. And then we walk through uh, the starting point, the highlight of the steps to love, which is on the, you know, on the... On the wall over there, but comes from Second Peter, one five to eight, and this is the cake recipe that pops out love, pops out an identity of love, and so we talked about how faith, trust starts the whole. It's the bowl. It's not even an ingredient. It's just a bowl that gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Okay, so you might be baking a cupcake, the very first time you bake out love. Because that's all you got. You got that little bowl of faith that you're going to add it to. And, you know, you might be a guy like Donald or Tanya or Ty. And you might be baking like, I don't know, a wedding cake now. You know, or a banquet bunch of cupcakes or something. You might have like this big old bowl of faith. That's okay. And it just, and it can, it can continue to grow. And that's what I love about this is there is no, there is no stopping any of these qualities. They aren't. They aren't meant to be achieved once, and now forever, that's the, the limit. These are limitless characteristics that add to a limitless amount of love, okay? Mm. And so we start with faith. And so last week, we talked about the first three. Um, so we start with faith, which is complete trust. I completely trust you, Lord. And we talked about how difficult that is when we say completely trust it, because faith is something that grows. So I completely trust you with this tiny little cupcake. I completely trust you with this, this, this like, hey, uh, hi, it, uh, you, you seem, you seem a bit upset today. Can, can I, can I do anything for you? Cause that's all the faith I got, right? I'm not going to say Jesus. I'm not going to nothing. I'm just going to be like, uh, I noticed you cause that's the faith I have. And then maybe you got like two cupcakes worth. And it's like, hey, I noticed you were upset and um, I'd really like to pray for you. So is it okay if I pray for you later? Because I don't have the faith to pray for you right now. <laughs> right? And so now I made two cupcakes. And then and then maybe I got like a, a dozen cupcakes now. You know, I got a pan full of a dozen cupcakes. And it's like, I have faith to, to, uh, to like, hey, uh, I noticed you're being bothered. Can I pray for you? Yeah, yeah, that'd be nice. Like, could I do it right now? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess so. I guess you could. And then we squeeze out some little, like, petrified prayer. You know, like, ah, Lord, can you, uh, can you just, uh, shoot, I don't know what to say now. I didn't know that you were going to say yes. And, and that's the way faith grows, right? But faith is only the building block. It's only the foundation of something. It's only the start of something, right? By faith, we're saved. That is the beginning point. And even our faith gets to grow. Even our, even our foundation gets to grow. And so what do we add to that? We add to that goodness, integrity. Because I trust you, I want to do right by you. Mm -hmm. Right? I want to walk in a manner that is, is in agreement with that. And because of that, I want to get to know you. Because in order to walk right by you, I got I to gotta know what you like and I got to know what you hate. I got to know what it means to walk in integrity. Okay, so that's where we ended. And so today, let's talk about self-control. Now, one thing I love when we talk about self-control is, self-control is not willpower. So every, every thought, teaching, idea, 
you've ever received on the idea that you have willpower, <coughs> throw it in the garbage right now. You don't. You actually, you and your humanity and your flesh have zero power over your will. Mm -hmm. That's why you keep getting into the problems. Mm -hmm. So what we want is not willpower. We want his power in our life. We want his power over our will, which is not my, not my will, but yours. His power over our will. So what do we, so what do we want then in terms of like, what is our responsibility then in terms of making choices? It's self-control. Mm -hmm. We get self-control and the beauty is it's a fruit of the spirit. It's something we can only receive as we continue to be grafted into the vine. As we continue to grow off the tree, so too is this fruit able to, able to grow in our life. <coughs> I can't earn it. I can't squeeze it out on my own. I need to rest in his will to have control over my life. Okay? And so what does self-control really mean? It means restraint exercise. It's an active word. It's an action word. Okay? It's not something you're not doing. See, we always look at things like self-control and willpower as the things you don't do. But self-control is actually what you do do in order to prevent you from not doing. It. Okay? Like that's really, that's what it is. So it's like, it's like if I'm an alcoholic, for instance, willpower says I should be able to have the power over my will. And so I can be in any environment and, and my willpower is going to protect me from this cup of coffee, okay? I'm not drinking coffee anymore, but you know what? I have so much power over me, I ain't gonna touch that. I'm gonna carry it around with me. I'm just gonna be like, I ain't drinking you, I ain't drinking you. I, uh, oh, you look really good, but I ain't drinking you, I ain't drinking you, okay? Self-control says, man, I, I know coffee's killing me. I know it's killing my life. I know the Lord wants me out of my life. So I ain't carrying that thing around anymore. I ain't going to the coffee shop. I'm not, I'm not having that. It's it's control on purpose. It's purposeful. It's like, I can't be around that toxic person right now because that toxic person makes me toxic. It's the restore one another gently, but watch yourselves that you aren't also tempted. That's what self-control really is. And you can see how you need, <laughs> you need self-control to be built on your faith because there's got to be some level of, look, I trust you. So I want to do right by you. So I'm getting to know how to do right by you. And I want to put control in place to protect this. Right? So it's like if you were baking bread. I learned a lot about baking bread now that I'm gluten-free. Okay? Trying to bake normal bread is already apparently something that most people don't try to do because it's it's just a pain. It's like it's like scientifically impossible, impossible at the same time. It's like it's like it should have worked out, but it didn't. It's like the yeast just didn't do what it was supposed to do because it's too old, too cold, too hot, too whatever. Like, it's just brutal. Now you throw in gluten-free flour and it's like times a billion. It's like just nobody likes making gluten-free bread. Right? That's why it tastes like garbage everywhere. Because even the places that know how to make it just can't make it. It's cardboard. It's bad. You got to toast it. So what I learned was is that as you start trying to bake your loaf, so you mix everything together, and if you don't protect every one of those steps, even in terms of the ambient temperature in the room, if it's too cold, it won't rise. If it's, if it's too humid, it'll rise too much, and then it'll fall. If you let it rise too long, because like the one time I was like, well, just let it rise. <laughs> like it was an hour. It was the first time it was working. And I was like, yes, it's working. And it's just like, it's like coming up and it's at the top of the pan. I'm like, honey, just leave it. Just see what happens. And it like, it like puffed way up and it was like awesome. I was like, yes, we're going to get the greatest loaf of bread. And it came out and it was completely flat. I was like, what the heck? Where did it all go? You, you can't let it rise too much. You let it rise too much, it just falls. It, it doesn't, doesn't have enough substance to hold itself. You actually have to protect that. It's so vulnerable. And so I like to, I like to look at these four so cool. as the vulnerable piece of our love. Mm -hmm. The thing that needs the most protection and nurturing so that it grows properly. These are the four. These are, these are the building blocks. Even if you want to look at 
a good healthy marriage, a good healthy friendship, a good healthy mentorship. These are the building blocks. I trust you. I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt. I want to do right by our relationship. I want to protect our heart to heart connection. I want to get to know you more so I know what, what fuels you and what kills you. And I want to put control in place to protect us, to make sure that junk doesn't get in so, so that my bad ideas are, you know, one of the things um, I love to, to ask students is, why are you punishing me for that? Mm -hmm. It's like, I'm really angry and offended with so-and-so, so why am I getting punished? I'm punishing you. Well, when you won't talk to me and you're giving me a bad attitude and, you know, you're uncoachable, unapproachable, and you're just grumpy, I'm being punished. It wasn't me that, like, I'm not even involved in that. Why am I being punished? Why haven't, and that's that, that's that self-control. It's the, like, I want, I value what I'm building at a high level. So I want to, I want to put some controls in place to protect it. As a husband, I don't hang out with men, with women, married or, or single. I don't drive them around and spend tons of time with them. And <clears throat> even, even in, even in my work relationship with Tanya, I'm very guarded, very protected. You know, we have meetings with the door open and I don't, I want to make sure that Lindsay never has to worry about it, never has to fear it. The enemy has never gets to tempt me with something because I value my relationship with Lindsay that much. I put controls in place to protect me from me, her from me. Yeah. Right? It's important. Yeah. She's always got access to my phone. She can always look at my phone anytime. She can question anything. I, there's no secrets. There's no no weird stuff. That's that's self control, for me. I don't watch porn. I don't I don't look at naked ladies. I don't say, well, it's okay to look and not touch. I none of that because I value her at a very high level. I don't I don't let that kind of that kind of control come out of my hands, because mm -hmm. I know my willpower ain't gonna help me. Mm -hmm. I know that. Like like I'm not. I'm not so like high and mighty on myself that I think, well, it's, a, it's okay. I could just, I could just coach a, 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 you know, pretty 30 year old that's single and kind of slutty. No problem. I mean, that's not gonna, that's not gonna hurt me at all. I mean, I'm just helping her and it's very innocent and no problem. We'll close the door and I'll have secret messages with her and I'll just build her up. Like for sure. That's never going to get me into trouble because I would never do that. How many of you have ever said, I would never do that? <laughs> and then turned around and maybe a year later, two years later, like, I thought I'd never do that. That's what self-control is for us. That's why it's so important to understand God never asked us to have willpower. He said he gives us his power. Mm -hmm. So then what are we left with? We're left with the fruit of something, which is self-control. Okay, And it's something that we are supposed to increase it more and more control of self. Cool? Okay. That's good. Well, how does, this other question, like, how does, like, what do you do there? So you're saying you have no power over your will, um, but God, you, you surrender to rest his, that's right, his will, but that's self control. Yep. And so, so from you, you're asking God, like, with the doors open and things like that, that's from God, uh, doing God's will. That's what God is. Yeah. Like, like, Okay, so for instance, for that one, so there's, there's there's a couple of verses I would just tack, tack on to that. One is, God will never allow you to be tempted farther you can bear. He will always provide a way out. So I'm always looking for the way, way out from being tempted, right? So like the very first, the very first ounce of like, wow, that girl, that girl's got a nice spot. Whoa, nope. Okay, like double over there. God, how do I? Nope, nope. Very first sign of temptation. I'm looking for the door out. How do I get out of this? How do I get out of this? How do I get out of this? Because he's always going to provide me a way out. So that's kind of number one. Number two is, it says to treat treat women as if they're your sisters with the utmost purity. Right? So I don't, I don't like, like I don't hug Tanya. I'll hug my real sister and like I'll get all snuggly with Allie. Like, like she was, she was like, she's like my daughter. I spent a ton of time when she was a baby. We're, we're way separated in age and. Like this is this is like my sister, right? It's like it's like having one of my twins. I'd never do that with Tanya, never. That would be so far outside of the boundaries for me in terms of treating her with the utmost purity. So you can't do one without the other. You can't just say, 
I'll treat her like my sister and then just have no controls in place because you have to have the utmost purity in there too. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. So they're God, they're, they're God granted controls. For sure. And, yeah. and he's, and he's good about telling him. Yeah. And then when yeah. I fall into a pit, I'm asking him, how do I get here? Yeah. What were the things I should have done or, or could have done or, or put in place to have protected them, protected me, whatever. Like even in terms of, um, it's not just always just protecting me. If, if I'm, if I'm say coaching or mentoring or, or, or vulnerable female comes in here who is highly attracted to men all the time and has a, has a habit of being whatever with men all the time. Okay. And men being their solution, especially if I know that they, that they, they don't care if they're married and those kind of things. I am like so protective of them because I want to make sure they aren't tempted past what they can bear. And then you put other controls in place. Like Tanya's going to be their coach. Tanya's always in the room. All kinds of stuff. Nope. Sorry. I'm not hugging you. You know, like all kinds of boundaries. And that that's not always necessarily even just for me. Sometimes that's just I love you enough to protect you from you. Especially as you're vulnerable. And so we have to be purposeful in this. Intentional. It's not just a oops, I'm in a situation and now I'm going to rest on willpower. It's like, no, I, I have to actually, in a very real Psalm 139 way, I got to get to know me with sober judgment and have an understanding as to the pitfalls for me. For instance, if you guys brought out whatever, you know, you, you put a big pile of like, I don't know, tobacco and alcohol and meth and cocaine and it's just all sitting here. It ain't bothering me one day. It's like, why did, why did somebody leave the garbage here? <laughs> Just be like, why is the garbage on the floor, guys? To another person in the room, that might be really tempting. That might be really like, how come there's a bunch of gold there? And we can't just throw that out. I know how much that stuff is worth and whatever. And there's that bigger thing. And so there's there's areas I can go into that no big deal. And like it, it's zero temptation for me. So I don't need a bunch of controls in place to be around it. There's other environments I have to be really guarded against. I got to really protect myself, man. You know, one of which is when I go to a hockey game. What The two things that draw me, I'm so grateful that I'm celiac. I know that sounds really stupid, but I'm really, really grateful for it. Because the two things that still taste sweet to me in my, in my mind, in my flesh, the two things, classic rock, highway to hell, that kind of stuff, beer. Those are the two. Those are the two for me. There, there's an emotional attachment to those two things. So when I go to a hockey game, yeah. <laughs> that is yeah. the hardest place for me to be yeah. and not get wrapped up in what's happening. I want the, the guy on the ice to get slammed. I want the referee to get yelled at. I want to say F you to the coach. I, I want to go grab a beer with the guys. Like, like that's the hardest environment for me. Mm -hmm. So I'm so grateful I'm Celia. I would just puke and puke and puke. If I even if I even had a sip of beer, that would be too much for me. I just puke everything out. So I'm so grateful because there's zero temptation. But before knowing I was Celia, that was a constant battle for me the whole time. I would have to ahead of time purpose myself. Okay, Tyler, you're not you're not gonna have a drink tonight. Mm -hmm. Right? That's not what you're here for. Okay, Tyler, you're you're not gonna be part of the problem with everybody else. Okay, Tyler, you're gonna you're gonna put on the mind of Christ. I would literally the whole drive into the hockey game be building myself up. How am I gonna control myself? How am I gonna have self-control in this environment that I know is gonna be very tempting for me to suck into? So then I would spend a lot of time with God asking him to give me all the different things I was gonna require in order to protect myself. Hmm. And that's what self-control really looks like. Knowing you really well, knowing your tendencies, and not beating yourself up. Like I think for yeah. me sometimes, um, like you have that that thing where your mind goes to something, and you, and then okay, but then you pull back. Yeah, but not beating yourself up. Like, no. the, like not. What do you do with it? Because when you take yeah. the open door yeah. that God gives you, you can actually you can actually pat yourself on the back. I was tempted. I was, I was going down that road. I looked for the open door. God opened a door and I went down. And I can go, thank you, Jesus. Yeah. 
without the shame of, I can't believe I was tempted. Whatever, man. You, I love it when PD talks about this. He's like, you think, you think pastors never look at women? Of course they do. They're a man just like everybody else. The difference is a good pastor takes the door to get out of it. He says, no, I love my wife too much. I love my God too much. No. And he walks away and he, and he, you know, he doesn't, there's not a second glance and all the other stuff, but temptations there still. And that, that's where it's like, it's, it's not because we're holier than thou. It's because we've learned to trust him and his way out. Ty, you had a thought? Yeah. So how, um, when you're going to those games, like when you're preparing yourself, did you notice that? Like, did you ever forget to do that? Did you ever not do that? Oh yeah. Okay, so stop. What was the difference then? Oh, the 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 like, like the difference was. I remember the first time that I realized I had a problem at a hockey game, because it's like I would have a conversation like this where it's like all about love and respect and honor and whatever. And then that night I'm on my way to the hockey game and I was a totally different guy, like totally different. Like I went back to like wanting to spend a bunch of money on alcohol. I went back to wanting to be the party guy when, you know, and, and I'm like high fiving and I'm booing the guy from the other team and I'm like, <laughs> shut up, you know, and I'm just that guy. And I walked out of there going, none of that was Jesus. Mm. What kind of hypocrite am I? And the next game, I remember really preparing myself and just going like, like, I want to be, I want to be a a Christ-like follower of Jesus. Mm-hmm. And and I actually I actually don't like going to hockey games anymore. Mm-hmm. I used to just love it. I just I just don't like it now. PD often wants to give me a game. Mm-hmm. And I'm dodging it on a regular basis. It's just like, ah, I don't think it's gonna work. It's a really long, it's a really long drive for temptation. Like just for me, like it's a really <laughs> long. I'll watch it at home. You know what I mean? Like it's just it's just a you know, it's a it's a really long, but but I remember the difference was I'm sitting in the stands. And uh, the national anthem came, you know, and I'm, and before I'm getting ready for the true north. That's the important part. Yeah, that's still true, right? Because you have to get yeah. This time I was getting ready for the prayer at the end. Mm-hmm. And as we started, as 15,000 people said, God, keep our land. Mm-hmm. Um, I just entered into prayer. I was like, Lord, they don't know what they're saying to you, but I do. And I'm asking you. I'm asking you to say yes to what they just said, even though they know they're not, they don't even know they're praying to you right now. I do. And I'm just asking you say yes to keeping Canada glorious and free by your will and your power. And that whole game was different. Wow. The whole game was different. It was like, oh, guys, come on. Lay off the ref. You know what? He's just doing his job. Ah! That was a good call. That was a good call. We deserve that penalty. It was just, it was just totally different. You know, I was still cheering. I was still having fun. It's like, hey, 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 you don't gotta get chippy down there. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Just self-control, guys. You know, it was just totally different. But I had prepared my heart ahead of time that I was gonna be Christ there. I wasn't gonna be me there, and it wasn't there for me that I was gonna be. An example of that. So it sounds like you made a choice before you were in right? You have to. Yeah. And that's the point. Because yeah. I don't have the willpower for it. I know yeah. that about me. I know my, myself well enough. Right? I, I can't listen to any secular music. Mm. It just it just draws me into a whole different reality from my past yeah. of who I was. So. That's good. Okay. All right. Well, we've basically covered all this. <laughs> James 4, 7. Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Self-control. Teach the older men to be temperate, worthy of respect, self-controlled, and sound in the faith. For the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. <laughs> so grace teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled. Whose power? Power of grace. Mm. The power of grace teaches us to say no to things that are not devoted to him and to live in a lifestyle that controls your environment. <laughs> All right. Now, those are the building blocks. Now, the rest of this stuff basically falls out. Okay? Basically adds itself. It's like I added the yeast and now it starts to rust. Right? I actually don't have to do anything else. 
but the yeast does change and it changes the composition and changes everything. So you can see how if I trust you and I want to do right by you and I'm getting to know you, what you like and don't like, what fuels you, what drains you, and I want to put protections in place to protect that, the very next thing is I overcome. I persevere. That's the very next thing. It makes sense though, right? How can we overcome without those building blocks? How can we overcome if I don't if I don't care to do right by you? <laughs> How can we overcome if I don't trust you? The very first thing you're gonna know when you're in a hard situation, especially relationally, the very first thing you're gonna know is whether you trust one another. Mm-hmm. Right? Because if I trust you, we're gonna overcome and it's not gonna be that, I'm gonna give you the benefit of the doubt. Ah, you're just cranky. Ah, it's just this. Ah, you're going through your own junk. If I don't, we're not overcoming. Because my first thing I call into question is whether you're trustworthy. Ah, you're just trying to be a jerk. Ah, you're just trying to be like that. The very first thing I do is I accuse your trustworthiness. It's the very first thing I do. Whether it's a friendship, whether it's a, a marriage or whatever relationship, whether it's even in your family, you can see this, but especially this way. Right? Minute it gets hard, how can we do this to me? We, we instantly call into question his trustworthiness. Where are you? You left me? You're banning me now? After everything I put into this thing? After all my integrity and righteous acts, you're going to prove untrustworthy now? Where's your integrity, God? <laughs> sure, yeah. yeah. Very first thing we do, we start questioning the building blocks. But if those things aren't in question, then we just sit there humbly before the Lord and we go, you are trustworthy and you are working all things out for my good. And so I'm going to keep pressing in. That's perseverance. So when we have those solid foundations of the relationship with God, we then can just overcome. It's just a natural thing. It's like this too shall end. You ever have those, like, like I've had those same exact Exactly. Like I've gone through this and I've gone through it again. And I've and I've and I've had it where it's like this too will pass. Mm-hmm. You know, God and I got through this then. We're gonna get through it now. I've had the exact same thing where the very next time it's like, seriously? Seriously, I gotta do this again? I gotta do this again. I gotta overcome this again. I gotta like come on, what did I do wrong? What did I do wrong? You know, it's the same thing. And all of that is a choice. We're so powerful that we get to make these choices. I can either rest on where we've already been and then use that as fuel to overcome yet again, or I can rest on where I think I should have been and could have been and all the things he's doing or not doing and all the things I'm doing and not doing. And it must be my fault and I I must have to pay penance and it must be because, you know, I only read one chapter of scripture this morning instead of four, you know, and I mean, if I was more holy like Donald and I was on my knees all the time, this probably wouldn't happen to me and... And, you know, if I was more like Mike and I really cared about all the intricacies of this stuff, then this wouldn't happen to me. And if I and, and we just we just spin this stuff out of control. And that's all that that's 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 all the lack of overcoming. And so when I know that I'm not persevering through something, I just back up. Mm-hmm. God, am I putting control in place to protect myself, protect our relationship? Am I getting to know you anymore or do I think I, I know you enough? you know am i even do i even care about the integrity of me in this relationship do i trust you and it shows me where to go to persevere perseverance is all about patiently going through things Mm. it's all about the goals we strive for we can see why it comes after self-control to overcome, you need the gift of restraining yourself. That's why I don't swear at God. Today. <laughs> right? I got more self-control than that. You know? It's like, it's like no, that ain't part of our relationship. That's why I don't accuse him. I got more self-control than that. So when I'm in a mess and I need to overcome and I got to patiently get through it, First Corinthians 10, 13. No temptation has overtaken you except what's common to men, mankind. And God is faithful, 
He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. He, he doesn't abandon you when you're in the hard space. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. Notice how some of our ways out ain't quick. Oh, yeah. You wouldn't need endurance if they were just a quick fix. We think helicopter us out. Every time I'm being tempted, helicopter me out. It's like, no, I'm going to provide a way out so that you can endure what you're in. Mm -hmm. So that you won't be overcome by it. So that you will persevere, not the other way around. God steps in if we're tempted beyond our capacities. He provides a way out, yes, but he also is faithful to not allow us to be in sin situations beyond what we're capable of enduring. If you're being tempted, know you're powerful enough through the Holy Spirit to stand your ground and not be overcome. We also see that there's great reward and benefit and perseverance. Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial. Having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. How many of us want a crown of life? Mm -hmm. How many of us really recognize that perseverance is a piece of that puzzle? Oh. You know, and that's the hardest part about Christianity is we think we shouldn't have to go through anything because we're receiving a crown of life because we're royal. Mm -hmm. It's like, like, no, you're just empowered to get through it at a whole different level. Mm -hmm. Here, perseverance in the Greek is more referring to enduring, remaining, standing firm, being steadfast. Romans 5, 3 to 5 says, Not only so, but we also rejoice in our sufferings, because we know that suffering produces perseverance. But this perseverance is a different Greek word. This is literally cheerful endurance. I don't understand how this works. How does suffering produce cheerful endurance? Mm -hmm. Like, why am I supposed to be happy about this, God? Mm -hmm. But if I trust you, if I trust you that when you say in Romans 8, 28, that all things work for my good, then I can cheerfully endure anything. Because mm -hmm. it's going to work for my good. Even if I'm the mistake in here. Even if I'm the problem in here. It's still, he's going to somehow figure out a way to turn this around for my good. And I trust him enough for that. Mm -hmm. I trust you, God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. James 1, 4. Let perseverance, cheerful endurance, finish its work. So that, I love so that. You may be more mature and complete, not lacking anything. There's a promise that comes after this. I want to be mature, complete, and not lack anything. I really do. I really, really do. Then I got to be willing to go through the process of what that looks like. But the seed on good soil stands for those with a noble and good heart who hear the word, retain it, and by cheerfully enduring, produce a crop. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. Kind of get through the wind and the rain. When we built a solid relationship, we're able to overcome and don't crumble. When we face trials and persevere in them together, the fruit is an increased character of ourselves and the relationships around us. Trial plus perseverance equals right. <clears throat> we're in there. That's where we're going to stop. That's where we're gonna stop today. Just kind of like, um, um, like the more that you, um, the more that you work at something and are persevering, are tempted, and then you res you resist the temptation, even Satan, you do that again, you do that again, you do that again. It kind of builds. You just it becomes it becomes easy, like it becomes more sure. automatic. You're, 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 that's where you need your mind. Okay. That's kind of but I'm, I'm going to change the sentence. You said flee from Satan. I don't have to flee from him. I just have to stand and he'll flee from me. You stand, stand firm. I'm not running from him. He's running from me. Well, okay. Yeah. Okay. Right? Yeah. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. 
I ain't running from you. No, yeah, we're just... No, when the bear comes, I don't run or I get attacked. As you move more pause. I get bigger. But I stand my ground, I stand firm, I yell, scream, and do everything I need to do <coughs> to keep standing, and it runs. Good. He's a lion looking for someone to devour. You start running, easy pickings. Just like you and Char. When you were running around, he just barked and ran. He's just this little nut. I don't even know why that relationship's like that. We know he's not racist because he loves Donald. <laughs> we actually thought he was racist. Just like. And then Donald came over and he just, oh, Donald, you're the greatest. And he's like, oh, oh shoot, I guess it's just me. She was really hoping I had a racist daughter. <laughs> That's not I busted by so Look guys, I I love this. I love this. I love this stepping block. This this puzzle. I love this because for me it's so motivating. There's always more. I can keep growing. I don't have to just like this isn't performance. This is just what growth looks like, right? And and as we continue, we're going we're going to move on to devotion to God. Of course, if you're overcoming, you're devoted to God. Of course. You're always devoted to something you overcome. Right? That's what godliness means. Yeah. Right? You think of all the relationships you value in your life and ask yourself, how many hard things did you have to overcome in those? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're like, of course I'm devoted to so-and-so. And here's here's the key. Right? It's like, why don't you give up that friend? Wow, well, we've been through so much. Mm-hmm. Ever hear that? Yeah. Right? Why don't you quit that job? Ah, I've been here a long time. <laughs> what? Perseverance always leads to devotion. Always. Good and bad. Mm. So as we start overcoming, of course we're devoted to God. Of course. I've been through so much with him. How can I give up on him now? Right? Which leads us into mutual affection. So when I'm devoted to you, then then it's about the we, not the me. Mm. Mutual affection is brotherly love. It's Philadelphia. It's What's best for you is best for me. What's best for me is best for you. It's it's communal love. It's like it's like uh, I want what's best for you. You know, a relationship. Say say a best friend. You've done life together. You've overcome a whole bunch of stuff. You know their story, whatever. And they get this like billion dollar job. Like yes, I want to celebrate with you. This is amazing for you. If you haven't had that building block, it's like, what about me? Yeah. Lost. You, you can't mutually affect because you're not devoted to the relationship. You, you can't you can't be okay with the other person's success. Yeah. Right? And in the end, what falls out is love. Yeah. And you can see why if you're actually really going to put somebody before you, there is a whole big cake that has to be baked first. Mm-hmm. You can understand why people struggle so hard with love because we haven't put in the effort to get there. We just think it's just going to fall out. I'm just going to go to the cake store. Like it just magically appeared there. I'll just magically ask God for love. How come it's so hard, God? Because you ask for more love. And to have more love, you can got to work at it. Mm -hmm. God, I just want to lose weight. Good. Stop eating so much. No, no, no. I just, I just want you to, I just want to follow. It's like, it doesn't work like that. I want to grow bigger muscles. <laughs> God, give me bigger muscles. Go to the gym. You know, dad says, here, I'll give you a gym membership. No, no, no. Come on. No, I just, I just want to, I just want to wake up in the morning. And be, wow. <laughs> buff today. Right? It's like, it doesn't, it, none of this works like that. It doesn't. It doesn't in the natural. So, how much more in the spiritual do we actually we actually have to be attached to this stuff? Is this good? All right, Heavenly Father, we thank you. Whew, we thank you for this time today, Lord. Teach us, Abba, to be overcomers. To cheerfully endure. With hope, Lord, because we trust you. We thank you that your plans are good. We thank you that you never leave us, you never forsake us, that you are always present in our times of trouble. 
Thanks, we are. Even the ones we get ourselves into. You're ever present in them. We thank you that you're a God who deserves to be honored, that deserves to be devoted to, that deserves to be loved. Thank you, Father. Bless this day. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen.